In this video, I will show you how you can develop an X1149 boundary scan test starting from an Agilent i3070 board file. The board file is one of the two startup files required for developing tests on the Agilent i3070 in circuit tester. The file can be generated by passing the CAD files using commercially available CAD translation software applications. Here we have the board file of a demo board and the custom lib directory containing all the library model files used for this project. We will now launch the X1149 boundary scan analyzer software and log in to the development and debug interface. Now we will start a new project and call it cherry underscore board. The X1149 software will then go ahead to build the project database. It will take just a few seconds. Okay, we will now load the board file. We select define board. Add a board and call it cherry. Select cherry and import the board file. Select the board file and hit next. Import the board file. We can see that the software has found the board file and also found the custom lib directory that contains the library model files used for this project. The software will load the library files for the devices depending on how they are defined in the board file. Hit verify to check the board. Here we see that there are no errors and two warnings. It seems that the settings in the board file have modified the project defaults. This is good. Let's save the data into the project. and click Next, and click Finish. There, we are done with the board import. All the board information and library files and library locations are now uploaded into the project file. Now, let's check that all the device information is correct. For the X1149 tests, the capacitors, resistors and ICs should be defined correctly as the software will review the available information to determine the possible tests for them. Let's check the capacitors and resistors first. We filter by device designators and type C in to filter out only the capacitors. Now I scroll through to check them. Good, all of them have been correctly detected as capacitors. Let's do the same for the resistors. We key in R in the text box to filter out only the resistors. And we scroll down to check. There, we see the resistor pack RP1. The software has automatically created child devices for the resistor packs based on the RPAC underscore 33 part description library. Let's now look at the ICs. There are 8 ICs. They are a mix of boundary scan ICs and non-boundary scan ICs. The boundary scan ICs have their BSDL defined according to what was set in the board file. For the non-boundary scan ICs, pin libraries have been found for them according to the board file. Let's confirm that the libraries are loaded into the project by looking in the library list. Here you can see that the BSDL files, part description library files, and pin library files have been imported into the project. The files were found in the custom lib directory. Let's go ahead to specify tests for some of the devices. Let's go back to the device list. Let's set cover extend test for two connectors on the board. We filter J3 out and put a tick under cover extend column and do the same for J9. 
filter J9 out and put a tick under cover extend column. We can also set cover extend test to a non-boundary scan IC that is adjacent to a boundary scan IC. This is U102. Finally, we want to do a silicon nails test on U105. The software has already found that U105 has a pin library. This was defined in the board file. Great! We are now done for the device definitions. Let's check the notes section. We would like to monitor the plus 3.3 volts node to ensure that it is on before we start the boundary scan tests. So we add a tick to monitor voltage and define the upper limit as 3.4 volts and the lower limit as 3.2 volts. Done. Now we would like to check the fixed and power nodes. This information was already found in the board file. The plus 3.3 volt is set to fixed 1, while ACOM is set to fixed 0. The plus 3.3 volt node is powered by power supply number 1 with 3.3 volts at 2 amps max and ACOM is defined as ground. As a minimum, the X1149 software requires a ground to be defined. Now we are ready for the software to find the chains. The software will use the BSDL files, netlist, and component types like capacitor and resistors to find the chains. We just click Configure Chains button. In order to proceed, all information is to be saved into the database. Let's do it. OK, the software found two possible chains on the board. We can click on the chain to see the components connected to it. OK, we will use tap port 1 to drive the first chain and tap port 2 to drive the second. We select both of them for the software to create the tests for it, and click Finish. Sometimes we can add additional coverage on the interconnect nodes by testing multiple chains together. The X1149 lets you do that easily. Let's say we want to test these two chains together by linking them internally through the X1149 controller using the Scan Path Linker feature. We select both chains and click Generate Multi-Chain. We call this new chain SPL underscore U1 underscore U106. Voila! We now have a new chain added. Now to generate the tests. Here are all the possible combinations that the software will try to create. We will let it do its work. The software will try to create each type of test depending on the available information like BSDR file, netlist, component type, etc. It will take a few seconds to load all the files to be processed. We see that there are a few tests that are not generated. These are tests that are not required. This is because there are no bus wire configurations defined in the BSDL files. We can see that there are tests created for the SPL chain. These include interconnect tests and bus wire tests. These tests could give additional coverage on the board. We can go ahead to close this window. Next, we will generate the test sequence. This is a default sequence with all the tests added to it. We will use the name cherry underscore board for this sequence. OK, if we want to see the generated test sequence, we right click here and select Edit. Here you can see that the tests have been inserted into sections, each section for different test types. 
Now to define the resources required for the project. Remember, we wanted to do a voltage monitor of the plus 3.3 volt node. We want to use the analog input on tap port 1 because we are using it to test the rest of the chain. And we select the first GPIO. The software has also found two nodes that need preconditioning, possibly because they were defined in the BSDL files. Since we know that this node is on the first chain, let's assign tap port 1 and GP driver 1 to it. And since this node is on the second chain, let's assign tap port 2 and GP driver 1 to it. Now you're done with the test development. Remember to save your project.